All right, thanks, Sandra. Well, Fox News alert Belgium raises its terror threat to the highest ever, saying there's a threat of an imminent attack. That comes as fingerprints revealing two of the Paris attackers entered Europe among the wave of refugees. And we've also learned the mastermind behind the massacre used a stolen Syrian passport to get into France and even bragged about being able to travel freely throughout Europe. Despite that, President Obama still says all Syrian refugees are welcome here in the United States. So what else does the president need to hear to change the policy or anything at all? Here to weigh in is the CEO of the National Center for Policy Analysis and Fox News contributor, Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Colonel, great to see you this morning. Good morning, Clayton. How are you? I'm doing great. I want to get your response to the administration's official position, which came out about 45 minutes ago. This was released on WhiteHouse.gov. This is Vice President Joe Biden trying to tamp down some of the criticism about the refugee crisis. Listen to the Vice President. There's no possibility of being overwhelmed by a flood of refugees landing on our doorstep tomorrow. Right now, refugees wait 18 to 24 months while the screening process is completed. And unlike in Europe, refugees don't set foot in the United States until they are thoroughly vetted. So, Colonel, you heard that. Criticism is, you know, this is xenophobia, this is bigotry. Let them come to the United States. What do you say? Well, first of all, we've already had individuals that have been, uh, these displaced persons have been sent to states such as Louisiana and others. Uh, Bobby Jindal was not even notified about those individuals being placed in his state. Uh, and so that's, uh, right now, that's a lie that the uh, vice president already, has already put out. You brought out earlier in the uh, lead into this segment about how back in 2009, 2010, the Obama administration canceled the Iraqi refugees coming here to the United States of America because of a terrorist threat that we had back in Kentucky. So that's a hypocrisy in it itself. But I think, Clayton, one of the real questions we need to ask, why are these displaced persons looking to go to Saudi Arabia, looking to go to Kuwait, the United Arab Emirates? Why aren't the Gulf Cooperation Council states accepting these Arabic brothers and sisters and to provide them the, uh, the care and comfort? Why is it that they are turning to Europe and to the United States? And also, why aren't they going to Turkey? You know, ISIS has said that they will infiltrate within these displaced persons, and we have seen evidence of that in France with the, uh, the attack that was there. We see evidence of that in Belgium. And so we should just put a halt to this thing right now until we secure the situation. Well, of course, one of the arguments is, and people pointing their finger at President Obama, that this the Syrian uh, refugee crisis is a crisis of his own making, and therefore trying to save face by bringing these individuals to the United States. The other argument on the other side of this is, look, Colonel, we're America. Aren't we a beacon of hope in this world? And where is compassion for the children, for the, for the, for the moms who are fleeing this crisis? Did we not create, help create this crisis? Well, I think it's the situational ethics that we have. This crisis in Syria has been going on for quite some time, and the president stated his own red line if chemical weapons were used, and he did nothing. Look, let's think about this. There was this quote-unquote humanitarian crisis that was happening in Libya, and we you know, committed the full power and might of United States intelligence and air power resources, and guess what we did? There was no real humanitarian crisis in Libya. We turned that country over to militant Islamists, and look what happened in Benghazi. And so I would say that why haven't we been doing more in, in Syria? Why is it now that all of a sudden this becomes such a cause celebre that the president wants to weigh in on? Well, so what can we do? You mentioned doing more. What can we do? Obviously, we saw some new polls out this morning, Washington Post, ABC News poll, saying that the United States, there is support for military in intervention in that region to, to stop the spread of ISIS, to stem the tide of these refugees. But what does that look like when we get into the nuance of this? Is it Donald Trump's let's just bomb ISIS, or is it let's put 50,000 boots on the ground in Syria to contain this problem? Well, first of all, again, I really get tired of people trying to assign a number. What we need to do is look to the United States military and tell them what the strategic objective is. Do we want to defeat ISIS? Do we want to destroy ISIS? Do we want to degrade ISIS? I think that one of the things that we should have done was establish a safe zone area for these displaced persons. We sh could have secured that. We could have put some type of no-fly zone or above that so that Bashar al-Assad or ISIS would not be able to come in and contend with them. But 
without a doubt, we have to deal with Islamist uh, sanctuaries, wherever they're established. And you're going to have to commit ground forces, uh, just if uh, ground tactical air controllers that can bring in the proper airstrikes. We know now that our air campaign has not been effective. It was, if it was so effective, then what are the French and what are the Russians bombing at this time? And we all sit here with that banner reading right underneath you right now with this imminent terror threat with Belgium warning of this terror attack today. Colonel Alouest, great to yeah. see you this morning. Uh, urgency Pleasure. all around.